And by calling for tickets at 213-896-3035. Again, that's 213-896-3035. Tori, more Drew, and more Me Too. And uh, when we left off, we were speaking to... It's, uh, I'm Dr. Seuss all of a sudden. Uh, we left off, we were speaking to Erin. Now, Erin has got herself in a little bit of a, a pickle because... Abusive she, boyfriend. She, right. Having an affair with another guy. Who's not abusive yet. Yet, who's so supposedly nice. What do you well, think? everyone's nice when they're two-timing. Because... <laughs> it, it, Seriously, it should be the, next, the name of your next CD. But, but you're alluding to something interesting, and that is that Aaron is sort of may be off in terms of her judgment on who she chooses to be in relationships with. You're, you're, yeah, if you're having a relationship with a guy who's cheating on another woman in another relationship, you will then be take the role of that woman, and the next new woman will come along and take your role. It is the... Uh, circle of uh, the wheel of uh, the chain of, uh, you know. <laughs> but the, the fact is, and it has to bring up the point, is that you, there might be something in, internal within you that causes you to choose relationships that tend to be abusive. And it's just, this is apropos to what Tori's uh, helpline is about. I mean, people suffer forms of abuse in childhood and then act those same relationships out in adulthood as a way to try to master those things in, in childhood, which were so horrible. Did anything happen to you, Aaron, when you were growing up? Um, yeah, I was raped by my father since I was five. Okay, all right. And so, having been through that kind of abuse, no. unless you were treated, unless you get some help, and this requires a lot of treatment over an extended period of time, that trauma is going to enter into every relationship you have from now on. There's going to be chaos, and there's going to be Im impossible difficulties trying to achieve real intimacy. Not well, only I've, be been, I've been trying to get out of relationships, um, harmful relationships, you know, and I've been seeing like a shrink and all that right. to talk to him about it. And no matter what I do, I can't get out of it. I think what everybody's saying here is that there's something in you you're not able to get out. Now, you have to look at that. There's something in you that feels like you don't have a choice here. You have a choice, but a lot of times people, be, they, they go to what they know. And it's the strangest thing, but sometimes you equate love with in a very strange way. Even though a part of you wants to get out, you're not out yet. So you've got to really look at that. Um, could she call your, your helpline? Was yeah, she somebody she, that could get she referred? Could call it. And now, she already has a psychiatrist and a treating but the treatment team. So but, but I question, I really have to say to you that you need to maybe really think about who you're seeing. And, and maybe I'm stepping lines here, but if you're seeing a psychiatrist, somebody who's trained, and you're still in an abusive relationship months later you've got to go hang on a minute what is it adding up here it's like wait a minute Well, she's not following direction i'm sure and what the direction would be is no relationships for a while aaron time out okay time out for aaron that you stop having relationships work on aaron for a while because every relationship that you're going to find is going to be abusive or if it's a quality relationship where there's a potential for intimacy she'll push it away. you'll push it away you won't be able to tolerate it so no relationship to aaron for a while just for a while and in the future, there is a potential for a quality Here is the thing that I think is interesting that uh, we have uh, talked about uh, that, that we, I've been finding out because uh, we get so many calls and so many questions. Now, Drew, you knew that she'd been abused, abused yeah. because people aren't much different in how they respond to the stimuli. Right. You it, abuse somebody, this is how they behave in adulthood. Right. And it, we're, we're led to believe that we are a society built of uh, free will, of free will and, yeah. and individuals and that we all, you know, everyone's different and what's, you know, you can't say what's right for them is right for you and so on and so forth. And I'm not talking about turning this uh, into China, but there are certain rules that apply to human beings. Like when they want to study the mating habits of polar bears, they just take ten. They don't take every polar bear in existence. They just take ten. They watch them for a couple of weeks, and they go, all right, now we know. And as sad as it is, humans work that way, too, in, in, a, in, a, in a very basic way. Right, not to take anything away from the individual, or, but, but the fact is if something happens at a certain period of development, there is a predictable outcome. Unless you go through right. a healing, healing process. Right, a healing process. And so when you said to her, you know, you really have to 
go in and look at yourself because it's easy to say, well, this guy's crummy or this oh, guy's right. crummy. It but maintains it, the defense. You're drawn to them. Yes. Right. And there has to be a level of responsibility. Even guys, if you're drawn to women who want to whip you and beat you and just urinate all over, you have to say, hang on a minute. There's something in me that I have to look at that I'm attracted to this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Great show you have for us. Adam, this question is right up your alley. This is James. Hey, guys, how's it going? You know what I think of when you say right up your alley. Oh. <laughs> right. Um, my problem is um, I haven't had sexual intercourse for three years. And uh, what happened was I had a real serious girlfriend. She took my virginity, and uh, I was in love with her. And she ended up uh, dogging me. So uh, ever since then, girls that I've dated have... Uh, I have no problem doing, you know, anything and everything with them, you know, such as oral pleasure and stuff like that, but I won't go all the way in the sake, you know, of getting hurt. And I'm stuck in between girls that uh, want to go all the way or nothing at all or uh, girls that just don't want to do anything. So what can I do to uh, get girls to meet me in the middle where I am? i uh, uh, got to introduce beer. <laughs> into this place. Right? Something, you said something really interesting. You said, she took my virginity. Yeah. See, you're coming from a victim space. You gave your virginity. Or did she jump on top of you and put a gun to your head? And no. Say, Give no, it she, no. Because, so you Even gave, then, I wouldn't consider it yeah, taking. <laughs> yeah. because, no, men, men get raped, too. Yeah. So if you can say, hang on a minute, I gave my virginity. It was your choice. You did it. Then you take some responsibility. You know, you're not this helpless little person here you gave you gave yourself to somebody that you thought you could trust mm -hmm. it wasn't safe it didn't feel good but not all girls are like that some are I was some gonna say are, don't you think he's projecting you know? onto all these other women that he's, he, he he's is, having relationships with but he asked with. a specific question and I think this and, and you're absolutely entirely correct in what's going on with him emotionally but I would to answer your question specifically I think a safer more fruitful place for you would be to start with the girls who don't want to do anything so to speak uh -huh. because what you'll find is when you are connected with them and, and, and do create a safe relationship that is is genuine then suddenly a physical relationship will grow out of that so you'll get where you want to go okay. Thanks a lot. Now is Lili L-I-L-I What a name. What's your question Lili? Hey um I've been intimate with a female friend off and on for like three years and about six months ago she caught herpes from another female and we haven't been intimate since you know she caught it or whatever but I was wondering if I wanted to be was it safe to have oral sex if the herpes is in recession or is it still contagious uh -huh. this uh, sounds like a job for a dental damn man <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we will uh, get into this question after we take a look at Silent All These Years. Soon my funny little shape. Let's hear what you think of me now. 